There's, oh, she's mad. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about jumping spiders and velvet spiders and just compare the two a little bit. I thought I'd give you guys a little update on Chai, my Phidippus regius, and Wednesday, my Gindenameno echinata. And I also thought we could rehouse Wednesday because she has actually molted again and grown a little bit. But we'll get into that in a minute. Before we actually start looking at the enclosures and how I keep them, I just wanted to give a little bit of general information. So jumping spiders are from a family called Solidicitae and there is like four to 5,000 different species of jumping spiders worldwide, which means that depending on where you live, you probably have some kind of jumping spiders. And then there are velvet spiders from the Aracidae family. And there's only about 130 different species of velvet spiders. And they're mostly located in the old world. Besides Brazil, there are actually some endemic to Brazil as well. So of course that means velvet spiders are a lot more difficult to find in the hobby to keep and even just generally worldwide. Like there are none here in the United States. If I wanted a velvet spider, I'd have to buy in exotic one and yeah so now that I've just kind of clarified that let's go ahead and get into the video <laughs> All right, so I guess let's go ahead and uh, point out where Chai is located. This is the area that she sleeps, and this is like her little burrow hideaway. This is where she comes when she doesn't want to be bothered. And as you see, she's actually done like a lot of different webbing around this. If you actually open the door, you will trip off little webs that she's kind of spread throughout the entire enclosure. She is probably, um, she's definitely over an inch large, but if you see her enclosure, it's quite big compared to what I keep my tarantulas in. And that's because she is extremely active and most jumping spiders are. So even though she's kind of here today, generally she walks around, just kind of patrols the area all day, looks for insects and enjoying her enclosure and all the little hideaway spots that I've been included. So yeah, let's get a little bit of a closer look. There she is in her little burrow trying to hide. Can you come out? No, there she comes. Yeah. Here she comes. Hi. This is Chai, and she is a Phidippus regius, or the regal jumping spider. This might be the best shot we get of her today, but she is really beautiful. She's really large. She can actually see really well, and she's actually super smart. And as you see, her enclosure is quite elaborate. She just has so many places to go, so many places to be. But of course, this is her favorite spot to hide when she doesn't feel like being bothered, and today is one of those days. So of course, I can handle handle her. She is pretty friendly, but she does jump. So that is something to always consider if you decide to keep one. She went back into her little burrow, but yeah. So I mostly just feed her like once a week or so. She eats a lot of different things, but she'll eat large crickets. That's something really cool about jumping spiders is they will eat prey that is like the same size as them almost. The only thing that I really don't like about jumping spiders is the fact that their lifespan is very short. I, I hear different answers, but usually they only live a around a year. I know you can get a little bit more or a little bit less, but it's just like the general lifespan for most. And it's really hard because they are so interactive and they actually have that personality that it's like you do get attached to them unlike other pets that don't really care if you exist or not. Like they actually do seem really like interested and they have that personality. So that is like the worst part I would say about keeping them, but they're really easy and you can learn a lot from them and they're really fun while they're here. So I definitely suggest you keep one if you haven't before. They're definitely one of my favorites. And they're also much more interactive than most spiders. So now let's talk a little bit about Wednesday, my velvet spider, my Gindenameno echinata, and she is an adult female. So you'll of course notice right away, her enclosure is much smaller than my jumping spider, but she's actually about the same size. This is because they are definitely not as active as jumping spiders. They actually make a little burrow and that's kind of where they stay. So I actually wanted to rehouse my velvet spider into this Exoterra nano enclosure because she's actually molted since I rehoused her. And I think that maybe giving her a little bit more space will just be a little bit more useful because she does web a lot and I know and I know that she is out at night webbing up because if you look in her enclosure, she has these little webs all over. So I thought it might be worth trying to put her in a bigger enclosure just to see what she does. Probably won't leave her burrow much more or anything like that, but we could just, I don't know, see what she builds. So yeah, I guess let's get some substrate and some cork bark. 
Now it doesn't have to be a lot of substrate because they don't burrow at all in the substrate. So any substrate you put in here, it's just gonna be for humidity purposes. So I am going to put this in the enclosure just like that. And this will be something that I'm hoping she builds her web tunnel in so I can actually see her. Cause where she's at right now, I cannot see her at all. So I hope this makes her actually like go somewhere I can see her more often. The thing about velvet spiders is that they actually really like to web up their lake area. So I'm gonna reuse this moss, this specific moss, because for some reason, this is the kind of moss that she seems to like the most. Yeah, I'm reusing this mushroom because it's really cute. I feel really bad taking her home apart like this. Where is she? I see her molt, but I don't see her right now. She hides so good. Oh, I found her. There she is, and her little wiggly legs and her bum. There's, oh, she's mad. <laughs> and I kind of think maybe we'll leave this piece of cork with her, but then again, if we do, she might just ignore the rest of the enclosure that I just put together for her. Let's get that sweet face. So tell me, you guys, do you think velvet spiders are cuter or jumping spiders? And the little butt, butt buttons. <laughs> He's so cute. So fuzzy, look at her little grumpy face. She hates me right now. She like really is like mad probably. Like, why are you destroying my home? But they are just so beautiful to look at. I hope that putting her in this new enclosure will make her actually come out more or make a hide where I can see her. But yeah, velvet spiders are just so rare to come by. Now, like I said, they are a little bit more reclusive than jumping spiders, but they do have longer lifespans, about five years. So that's significantly longer than a jumping spider. So difficult to find, but it's so worth it when you do. So I really recommend if you ever see any available, get it. All right, I'm so sorry. You're probably so annoyed right now because I'm just going on and on about you, but you're just adorable. So I am actually going to leave this piece of cork, I guess, in here for her and hope that she actually comes out more. I feel like I might regret that, but yeah, it just seems like she might enjoy that more. I mean, I'll let you guys know what she does, but like I said, she's not the most active spider ever. Here's, aw, look at that little molt. The littlest fangs ever. Yeah, she literally hates me right now. It's okay though, hopefully she gets over it. Like, should I just kick you out? Like, I kind of just want to kick you off of this. Have you explore the place? But yeah, no, it's good that she has more cork to like web up probably. So I'll just leave that in there for her. All right. I'll leave you alone. It would be really cool if she did some more webbing, especially on this piece over here. So I don't know, we'll have to see. But yeah, that is Wednesday. They are now neighbors. So last time I showed you guys the spider, the ogre face, a lot of you guys said you couldn't see it, even though it's huge. So I'm just gonna give you guys a second to figure this out. Let me know if you see the spider. But anyway, all right, very cool. Thanks for listening. Let me know which one you like better, which one you would like to keep. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you're not. And Don't forget to subscribe to these. Probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And yeah, let's get into the Patreon pet picks. <laughs>